So once again, a big welcome to you all. Um, we're really delighted to be taking part in Tree Week with you. Um, today's um, session is on legendary mythical Irish trees. Um, so we're really delighted to have Rob Nelson um, here with us, who's representing Green Schools on Leaf Ireland. And um, so Rob is going to take you through some really interesting facts about, um, or well, maybe not facts, but legends about <laughs> Irish trees. Um, and uh, we will have time for a Q&A at the end of the session. Um, so please do keep your microphones muted throughout, um, but you can use the chat box to ask and answer any of Rob's questions. Um, so just while I'm handing over to Rob now, I'm just going to ask you guys a little question and see what does anybody know already about this topic. So has anybody already heard um, a myth or a legend around an Irish tree? So if you have, you can put it in the chat box now. Um, and while you're doing that, I'm going to hand over um, to Rob. So over to you, Rob. Hi, everybody. Um, you're all very welcome. I'm just going to find my presentation and start sharing. So uh, give me one second. Um, brilliant. So um, as I said, everybody, you're very welcome. Um, my name is Rob and I'm a Green Schools officer based in Sligo. And my background is in outdoor education. So I am by no means a tree expert, but I do know a lot. So I wouldn't say I'm expert, but maybe the next level below that. Um, so out of interest, I have been collecting legends and myths about trees and in particular our native Irish trees for the last while. So um, so we're going to talk a little bit about them, but can anyone name our any of our native trees, you can throw it in the chat. And uh, I see some have already mentioned about cutting down the fairy trees. Does anyone know what the fairy trees are, which trees they are? Um, and yeah, we'll have a look through the chat all the way through. I'm, I'm going to do about 10 native trees and we'll start with trying to get uh, whether you can identify them just based on uh, what what they look like. So uh, we have lots of native trees in, in Ireland, um, in our woodlands, in our hedgerows, not as much as we used to, but um, we're getting better. So uh, to start with, let us look at uh, this tree here in the corner. You can see its leaf. It uh, likes to live in wet places and it's called Irish mahogany. So does anyone know what that tree is? I'll have a glance at the chat and see. It's not birch, it's not holly, it's not chestnut. Uh, it's, and hawthorn, yes, if you're answering about our uh, fairy tree, hawthorn is one of two that we consider to be our fairy trees. Any guesses on what this tree in the corner is? I don't see any coming in. We'll go to the next slide and we'll see if we can recognize it. So, alder. Uh, and I'm not going to attempt to uh, to pronounce the Irish for it because I'm not a, a Gaelgor, but I have it there so you can you can take note and, and use that. Um, so Alder has a lot of myths and legends associated with it. Uh, someone asked in a previous webinar about which was the first tree in Ireland. Um, and one of the, the myths associated with Alder is that the first man sprang from an alder tree. Now, it's unlikely that alder was one of the first trees in Ireland. Uh, in terms of trees, there's species called the pioneering species, and that's our juniper, willow, birch, and hazel in Ireland. So it's more likely that it was one of those would have been the first trees in Ireland. And um, we'll talk a little bit more about them later, but hazel is probably the likely one that, uh, that Irish people would have, uh, have associated with being the first tree. So alder is, uh, it grows in damp places near alongside the rivers. It has nice little um, seeds that you can see there, the fairy in the corner swinging out of the tree with the, the cone shaped seed. It's a conifer tree, but it actually is a broad leaf and it loses its leaf. So most of our conifer trees are evergreen and, um, and they, they keep their leaves all year round. Traditionally, 
we made our shields in Ireland from alder, and it's associated with war and death. So it's the war and death tree. And the reason for that is when you cut an alder tree, uh, the wood starts to go from white to red. So it's associated with blood and death for that reason. Um, so as I said, it's associated with the first man sp sprang from the alder tree, and it's traditionally best avoided. It's an unlucky tree. So if you're starting out on a journey, you shouldn't start out near an alder tree. That's that's one of the Irish traditions that has been passed through uh, for many years. So right in the centre there, you can see a picture of a nice fairy, white horse fairy. As alder grows alongside our rivers, it's associated with water fairies, especially the fairy horse. So you can look up all about him. Um, and it's known as the Irish mahogany. That's because it's a really hard wearing tree. So it was used for, um, for a lot of different things like uh, flooring and wood and posts uh, for holding up houses. In fact, many of the buildings in Venice in Italy are actually standing on pillars of wood made out of alder because it retains its shape even in wet uh, environments. Just out of interest, I hope there's some Harry Potter fans there, but if there are, we have uh, all of the ones from Harry Potter are from native trees in Ireland and England. And uh, Professor Quiller Quirrell's one is actually made out of alder for anyone who is interested in that. So I'll move on to our next tree. And uh, so it's wood is what makes hurls and it has black buds. So it's really easy to identify even when there's no leaves on the tree because it's the only one that has this jet black bud. Can anyone identify what tree this might be? We have lots of, yeah, lots of right answers in the chat. Well done. So very fast off the, bo uh, off the box with your fingers there answering that. So. We're talking about the ash tree. So ash is an amazing tree. It's really, really a popular tree in Ireland and it would be our most common tree. But unfortunately, it's got an, a disease at the moment and it's called ash dieback. So uh, it's not, probably not our most common tree anymore. So we're saving the seeds and we'll bring them back once that disease has died out. So uh, it's not going to it's not going to be as badly affected as we once thought. The recent studies suggest that about 50 to 60 percent of the ash population will survive this. But it has always been a very important tree in not just Irish ancient uh, myths, uh, but in other cultures as well. For example, in Greek mythology, uh, a nymph who is uh, a female uh, spirit that's responsible for mind in the forests, was being chased by Zeus, the god of lightning, and they turned themselves into an ash tree to, to hide away from them. And the Greek and Roman mythology both have uh, nymphs as a part of their uh, mythology around minding of the woodlands. So it's in Ireland, it was considered a very sacred tree to the Druids and part of a magical trilogy of trees, along with oak and uh, hawthorn that we'll talk about a little bit later. And very important to Irish history are the Vikings and the Vikings, they have uh, ash as one of their very most important and sacred trees. So long before, uh, Asgard was something that you could see on the television as a big floating golden city in the sky uh, with a rainbow road leading to it, if any Marvel fans amongst you. The Vikings had uh, a myth around the ash tree, or what they'd call it, Ig Drizzle Tree. And that Ig Drizzle Tree was a giant ash tree that linked up to the heavens from the deepest in the ground. So it links the underworld um, and connected it to Asgard. Or um, Nig Valham, Hayam, and Joe Hayam, and 
uh, Asgard were all linked by this one massive big ash tree. So very important to their culture and history. And of course, a lot of our culture and history has melded with them since they came over in the very early ages of, of Irish history. Um, in Irish ancient history then, uh, ash was known for its curative properties. So it was also, the bark of it is an anti-inflammatory and it was used to cure warts. So there was a whole song that you would say, you'd rub your warts up against the ash tree and you'd say, ashen tree, ashen tree, pray by these warts for me. And then you'd pin a gift or tie a little ribbon around the tree and the tree would take your warts away. And of course, ash also very important to Irish sport and history, isn't it? It's associated with one of our most famous sports worldwide, which is hurling. And we make our hurls from ash. Unfortunately, at the moment, we're importing that ash to make it. But um, we have been traditionally making this from Irish ash because it's very strong and durable wood. And of course, we have Hu Holland here in the corner um, who is sporting his hurl. And he was very famous for his hurling abilities. It's how he became a member of the Red Branch Knights. When he was five, he left his home and off he went to join his uncle's knights, the Red Branch Knights. And the Red Branch Knights actually are associated with the alder tree that we talked about there. And their weaponry and their shields would have been made of alder. Um, in terms of Harry Potter, I'm always going to bring it back to Harry Potter. Uh, Cedric Diggory and Ron Weasley also had wands made out of ash. So um, it's an interesting one to know. Okay, so our next tree that we're going to look at is called the Lady of the Forest. And it's the first letter in the Oum tree alphabet. So there's actually a tree alphabet in Irish history and a tree zodiac, so a tree calendar. And we'll talk a little bit about them in some of the later slides. Um, does anyone know what this tree might be? And we have a question about why is ash called the Irish tree? It's just because it was one of our very, very common trees uh, in Ireland. So it was all over the place and we used it in, um, in stuff. No, it's not the beech tree. You're close enough, but not beech. It is our birch tree. So, does anyone know anything about birch and why it might be? Well, we had some right answers there. Um, why it might be so important to our history. As we can see here in the middle, birch or uh, belua utilis or useful in its Latin, Latin name, or if you look in even back further into Sanskrit, which is, it was called the Oja tree, which literally translates to the tree whose bark is used to write on. So as you can imagine, if you feel the bark of a, a birch tree, it's very paper-like, and it actually was what we used for paper originally. So uh, from the the 4th to the 16th century, we collected the bark of the birch tree and we wrote on it. We used it to illustrate stuff, maps and sacred te texts. And it had been considered by the Druids and the Celts to have um, magical properties. So they used to put magical spells and magical texts on it. So the ancient Celts believed that the bark was magical and protected um, people uh, kept them safe. So it was used to make amulets um, or talismans or medals that kept people safe. And it was also traditionally used to make cribs to keep children safe. Um, they believed that these cribs and tokens would protect and warn off evil. And in particular, it protected against uh, 
fairies who brought changelings to switch out the children into changelings. Um, and uh, there's another association with that is that the changelings would become naughty children. Uh, we've got a nice question about the strongest tree and we might try and answer that later on. Um, the, the fact that we associate birch with guardian, uh, garden, guarding us from evil spirits and this changeling thing, it has a little bit of a more sinister element into it in that birch rods used to be used back when um, children were bowls. They might have been smacked by a, a birch rod. Not that we do that anymore, but it kind of leads to where we came up with ideas in books and stuff. So, for example, the witch that carries a birch wand in Harry Potter is Dolores Underbridge. And of course, she's known for um, being not very nice to the children. So maybe that's why she carries a birch wand. So this native tree, the flowers and berries are collected from medicine. It's called the poor man cold and few flu remedy. Does anyone know what this native tree might be? I'll give you another hint. It's very important to Harry Potter. Maybe the most important wand is made out of this tree. Any guesses? Hawthorne, it's not Hawthorne. Elder, well done. So yes, this is elder. And we use the elder flower and the elder berry. We make nice drinks out of it. And of course, the the um, it was used as medicine in, in olden days. So elder was used by the druids. Uh, they used to make an ointment out of it to put on your skin to get rid of any ble blemishes. So it's very good for your skin health. And it's associated with um, so medicine and the elder wand, obviously, who's carried by Dumbledore. Um, and other and Harry Potter has it at some point, and so does Voldemort. Um, and it's also associated with St. Patrick. So St. Patrick's staff was apparently made out of elder. Elder. It's one of the most well-known native trees, and it, it's exceptionally good for the wildlife and fits in any hedgerows. According to Irish tradition, tradition elder is considered to be an evil tree. Uh, elder wood is said to be cursed, so you're not supposed to cut it down and you're definitely not supposed to burn it. And superstition says you must never put it in the fire because if you. Our elder. Um, elder does have positive uses, as I said, the flower and the uh, is made into elderberry champagne. The berries are used as well uh, to make wine and to make nice um, um, drinks. And then the unripened berries and bark uh, and younger branches are made to, uh, to cure burns and blemishes. So good for your skin. Um, and as I said, it is believed that St. Patrick used a branch from the elder tree um, as his sacred rod that he removed all the serpents from Ireland with. So um, lots of information there. So uh, we'll go on to our next tree. Uh, I'm in bloom in May. I may have nicknames, including Quick Torn. Uh, and if I grow by myself, it, I'm called the fairy tree. So I think we'll know this one very quick. So white thorn or fair or uh, or hawthorn, yeah. Um, not the cherry blossom, although the, the flower does look very like the cherry blossom. So uh, it's a good guess, but yeah, we're talking about the hawthorn. So in Ireland and in England and in Wales, uh, the hawthorn and the black thorn are kind of melded together when we come to our our myths and um, our legends. So we're gonna we're gonna look at both together. So uh, this is our hawthorn, 
and then our black thorn has a very similar flower um, but a different leaf and it comes with a, a nice berry. Does anyone know what that berry is called? It looks like a blueberry but it's not a blueberry and trust me you don't want to taste it thinking you're tasting a blueberry because it's not exactly the tastiest. Um, but teacher might have some in a drink, in a gin drink. Do we have any guesses? A slow, yeah, very good. It is the slow uh, berry. So um, I'm going to deal with both the, the hawthorn and blackthorn um, together because there's kind of, they're blurred when it comes to our, our history and our um, mythology of them. So the hawthorn or the blackthorn are our fairy trees. And remember, we said they were one of the trilogy of trees that the Druids um, the Druids use as their magical tree trees. So Hawthorne is fragrant, it smells spring and summer and playful, and it's mischievous. So unlucky to cut it down, especially if it's a standalone tree, which we, we said is our fairy trees. Uh, both trees have been associated with the crucifixion and the crown of uh, thorns that Christians believe it, it, um, that it Christ wore when he was heading to be crucified. So it, there's an association with that. And because of that, they've been planted in and around holy wells. So um, there's a big link with them there. In Welsh mythology, the Hawthorn had a giant chief that was associated with it. And the story of this giant chief, he had one big eye that he was able to see things. And he was, that's associated with the story of um, the Lord of the Rings and the eye of Mordor. So this big eye that can see everywhere um, is associated with that Wel Welsh history. And of course, the writer of the Lord of the Rings, Tolkien, was a Northern Irishman and would have known all that and studied that. So he brought that idea into his books. In Norse mythology, Odin's father, also a giant called Isa, uh, is called the Balthorn and or the Evil Thorn. And he is associated with the Black Thorn bush. Um, so that was one of the, the things that the, the Norse, when they were praying to that god, would, would use. In Indian legend, the thorn tree was known from the god of lightning, uh, Agni, who uh, assumed the form of a falcon and was commonly believed to protect trees against lightning. And that's a common thing that we see along a lot of our mythology is this protection against lightning. So there's a few trees associated with the gods of lightning and that planting them in your in around where you live or your property would protect you against that lightning strikes. Blackthorn is both helpful and harmful in our in our mythology. So blackthorn um, is shadier, it's darker times of the year and it, uh, that it's waiting to catch you in Irish history. They think of it as this sinister tree that's trying to catch you when you go for its berries, it's going to get you with its thorns. So while the hawthorn has fairies that are just a bit mischievous, mischievous the blackthorn has fairies that are out to get you. Um, and in Irish tradition, the branch were considered a good thing to carry at night to keep those fairies away from you. So they they actually were used in weapons like clubs um, to, to, and, and in your walking sticks as well in Irish tradition. In Scotland, the tree is cursed um, and they say better the bramble than the blackthorn, but better the blackthorn than the devil. So it's associated with darkness again. In uh, the Irish term, shillig means club, and that's the clubs that the Irish used to carry around. So it was kind of the first kind of weaponry that they would have carried and then used for our walking sticks as well. Um, you know, slow berries aren't poisonous. Yeah, good. <laughs> good. They, 
good uh, good question. They're not poisonous, but uh, I I wouldn't suggest eating them. They they kind of a lot of people will say they give you something like a numb tongue. Um, they're they're very much an acquired taste. Uh, they're not poisonous, but they're they're not tasty uh, unless you soak them um, and make uh, a, a wit wine or a gin or something out of it. Um, so yeah. Uh, good to know there's questions going in there. In Irish and German um, mythology, Blackthorn is seen associated with witches as well. Um, and not surprising me, in Harry Potter, it's uh, Malfoy, or Draco Malfoy, who actually carries a, a Hawthorn uh, wand. So, our next tree, very important tree in Ireland, um, the Tree of Knowledge. Does anyone know about the Tree of Knowledge? Um, it's associated with a fish as well. So you might know the story from the fish. So if you know what the fish is, you can throw it in there. Um, if you can eat the nut, you can gain the wisdom. It's not a chestnut and it's not a beech, it's hazel. Well done. So. Uh, we have some that know hazel. And and does anyone know the fish that is associated with the tree of knowledge? Salmon, well done, yes. Yeah. So the salmon of knowledge is actually one of our Irish myths. And uh, there was a well of uh, a fountain or well that's associated with it where the fish swam in. And around that well, there was nine hazel trees growing. So I always remember when you look at the leaf of a hazel tree, it's uh, it's got a nice point to it and it actually feels hairy. So if you're trying to remember a hazel and you can feel the leaf, then you can say hairy hazel has a point. Um, so, and that's how we can remember when we're looking at it. So again, it's associated with the the, the fountain of knowledge um, and um, it, it's associated with the salmon of knowledge who swam in that well and uh, the magical hazelnuts fell in the water and ate. And there's a famous person then associated with that in Irish mythology. Does anyone know who ate the salmon of knowledge? Um, as it wasn't the person who was trying to catch it the whole time. It was his apprentice. Does anyone know what his apprentice name might be? Fionn McHugh, well done. Um, so Fionn McHugh was tasked with cooking the salmon of knowledge by his master who had spent seven years trying to catch the fish and fish blistered and Fionn McHugh put his thumb on it and burnt it and then he licked it and he was the one who got the knowledge instead of his master. Um, so it's a it's a story that actually is unique to Ireland, but also is used in other Celtic cultures like Wales and in Germany, where they have similar stories around the hazel tree, but they don't have a salmon, they have a snake involved so um there must have been something in it when uh, the hazelnut gave you all of your brain energy i'm guessing um so the sacred well was uh the well of knowledge was surrounded by nine hazel trees and that's across a lot of different mythologies the norse have a similar well um and all all you needed to do in the norse or Viking tradition was to drink the water from the well, so they had no fish or serpent. Um, branches have been associated with protection against evil and against bad fairies, and many ancient uh, burials include hazel branches and hazel nuts for the passage to the next life. So they were left with them to protect them on their way to the next life. Um, brilliant. Um, so uh, hazel rods then are associated with magic. And one of the stories, Fionn and his wife, uh, Saib, uh, have been transformed by a dark a druid into fawns because uh, they used this hazel wand. In, in Harry Potter then, um, 
If you could turn off your mics for the moment, that'd be great. Um, uh, Sybil uh, Farwani, the professor of divination, has a hazel wand. So it's associated with all knowing. And we, we would have used them in the construction of our houses uh, back when we um, when we lived in uh, wicker houses. And obviously the Vikings used them as well. So our next one, I think is quite an easy tree to, to identify. Does anyone know what this prickly leafed evergreen tree, which is very important for uh, winter uh, birds? And yeah, it is holly. And holly is a really interesting tree because there's a male tree and a female tree, and only the female tree produces the berries. And if it feels like it's been attacked, a holly tree can become more spiky. And if it doesn't be, if it's not been attacked, it can lose its spikes. So if you go up, all our leaves on the top of the tree don't have as many spikes as the ones down the bottom where things can get out. Holly is very important to the Irish, um, the Irish traditions and to other traditions around the world. So due to its resilience, Against lightning strikes and fire, it's associated with the Celtic and Norse gods of thunder. So Tyrannus would have been the Celtic god. And Thor, who you'll all know from, from the Marvel movies, was the god of thunder from the Norse or the Viking god of Thor, thunder. So it was planted traditionally around our dwellings or our houses to as a pretend, pre preventative measure against lightning strikes and the Romans and the English did this as well so it was widespread across Europe. Now we know that the Vikings definitely did this when they did dug up the uh, in Dublin around Wood Quay when they were exploring the, the first Viking settlement in Dublin they found evidence that there was holly planted outside of nearly all of the houses there so something that has traditionally been carried out right the way across Europe. So maybe because it's spiky, it's associated with lightning, but um, it was something that they, they associate with it. The Druids believe that the holly tree possesses protective qualities, such as guarding against evil spirits and bad luck as well. Uh, it's associated obviously with Christmas um, and uh, this, and particularly with St. Stephen's Day in Ireland. So the Wren boys would have um, used uh, the holly as part of their rituals as well. It, it's considered a gentle and noble tree in ancient Irish uh, history and protective powers over people and in particular over animals. And holly, at the end of every summer, the holly king defeats the oak king and becomes the ruler of the dark months. So the Druids believed this to be a sacred tree. Holly was sacred and used around the winter um, solstice or the winter celebrations that we would associate with Christmas. Uh, the English planted holly to protect their houses and graveyards from witches as well as lightning. Um, and Possibly one of the most interesting ones, and Harry Potter himself carried a, ho a holly wand. And of course, there was a twin wand to that carried by Voldemort. Can anyone name this tree? It has a lovely red. Oh, it's already got the name. I didn't even. <laughs> so, Rowan, if you if you if you didn't be able to name this one, you you, you weren't paying attention. So, our Rowan tree or mountain ash is uh, associated uh, in particular it, it, there's a legend in Sligo uh, which tells of the forest of Duras uh, where there was a fairy host dwelt there and uh, bringing them uh, sacred rowan berries from their fairyland and those berries um, went ground up and made into uh, a, a, a nectar or, or something to drink were supposed to be really sweet and gave you extra long life. Um, so maybe they're uh, ones that we should look out for. It was supposed to be a massive big tree 
that um that linked the fairy world with uh the human world so they were drinking uh, rowan wine um the Ro- rowan was known by the druids uh as the druids tree throughout europe so not just in ireland the druids uh, associated themselves with rowan and mountain ash right away through Europe. And that's because it grows in all sorts of so- soils and all sorts of difficult places, uh, craggy rocks and mountains, sides that it clings on to life, no matter the odds. So it was very important. To... Yeah, we had some right answers in there probably before they read it. <laughs> um, uh, it's associated with the Finnish legend, the god of thunder uh, called Uku, so you can see thunder and lightning was was a very important thing back in the in our ancient times. It was something that um, people obviously needed to avoid because it brought fires and it took down their uh, dwellings that were made out of wood. So they always looked to try and protect it. Um, but Uku's wife was called Rune, and Rune was a uh, said to take the form of a rowan tree. So um, because of the intense redness of the berries, it led to becoming known as this. And then because Finland and Norway and Denmark were all Viking um, and taken over by the Vikings, this was then known as Thor's tree. So even though it was the Finnish god Uku um, that the tradition started around, um, it was kind of taken over by Thor. So Thor's tree is your uh, Rowan um, tree. Uh, there's no characters in, in Harry Potter that uh, that have a uh, Rowan wand, but who knows when you get your letter in the post, maybe you become the first one to carry a Rowan wand. Um, so our next tree, it loves to grow in wet places. It's easy to bend and it's used to make fences and archways and baskets and art. Does anyone know what tree it might be? Well, oh, well done. We have some great answers coming in very fast. Um, and yeah, it's um, something has been nibbling at this one. So does anyone want to guess, guess what might be nibbling at our willow tree? Any guesses? Caterpillars. Yeah, we'll see now. It has been. Caterpillars have been at our willow. Um, so willow is associated with the tradition. It's traditionally made harps. So it's associated with the Irish harp. And of course, the Irish harp is associated with Leinster. And the most famous of these harps that we have from our ancient past is the one that is called Brian Baru's um, harp, which is in Trinity College. Now, Brian Baru is actually, if my family history is right, supposed to be a distant, distant relative of my mother's. So, um, of course, that's what we say, whether it is true or not, I don't know. And considering my second name is Nelson, uh, it's more likely I would have association with Vikings than I would with Brian Baru. But my mother's second name is Bro, which is supposed to be associated with that. So I just thought I'd throw that in there. Um, it's obviously the willow is associated with the weeping willow, uh, which is associated in Ireland with grief. Um, and traditionally in Ireland, it is actually considered a noble tree. So across Europe, it's associated with grief, but not really in Ireland. It's considered a noble tree and brings happiness um, because it's associated with water and life. Uh, unsurprisingly, water loving willow is like um, is linked with the river goddess. Um, Brian Bowen, I can never pronounce that, uh, who is associated with the uh, River Boyan. So uh, again, it's again linked with Leinster, uh, the Willow, and um, with that particular area. Famously in Harry Potter, it's linked with the Whomping Willow. And does anyone know who carries a Willow wand? Any guesses? If I told you it was one of the Potters. Lily Potter, who's Harry's mother, carried a willow wand. 
So I know that's not traditionally our myth, but I thought I'd throw it in there anyway. Okay, so our next tree um, is the king of the forest and they grow from tiny things. Yes, well done. Oak and acorns, well done. Yes, so from a small acorn, a mighty oak grows. So it is associated with might and the king of the forest. And we already mentioned that it is associated with the Druids um, as well. And the Irish name, obviously, on there is associated with areas of Ireland. So if you were in Derry, named after the oaks and even has it on its crests, or Kildare, there, or anything with there, or Derry associated with it, then at some point there was an oak woods there. So oak associated with the passage of the year in Ireland. Um, Derry is associated with it because of the name, and it's associated with ancient settlements in Ireland found near Cranogues. Um, so it was used to either build the Cranogues um, by ferrying the rocks over or put in underneath in the structure. Um, and the Cranog Og obviously is a dwelling that was an island dwelling, but an artificial island usually. Um, they made it close close to the, the edge of a lake, um, but gave themselves protection from anyone who might want to take their animals. Um, so the posts of these uh, were, were held together with oak. It's also associated with the roads uh, recovered under bogs. So our ancient roads might have had um, oak placed on it because it was a very hard wearing uh, tree and um, it was really strong so it would last for a long time. The Druids held oak tree as their most sacred tree so and it still is one of Ireland's most sacred trees because it is one of our most biodiverse trees so it is, can be associated with a huge amount of insect life and animal life. Um, the sim it's a symbol of kingship and um, the mighty oak is associated with strength and fertility. And the oak king uh, who defeats the holly oak or the holly uh, king every year uh, when it's coming to the summertime is the ruler of the light months. Um, so remember the holly king was over all the dark months and the, the oak king for our summer months. And the Druids then considered oak uh, sacred for that reason, and they would use oak around the summer solstice, so around our summer festivals. Um, so oak is a magic tree, and it's associated with the story of the Tawn, Cúchulain, and Queen Maeve as well. So that's the story about the big black bull that was chased halfway across the country. Um, something you can look up a bit more about. Um, the oak of Mung Mugna, in Moon in County Kildare. So again, Kildare or Kildara, which is uh, associated with uh, oaks, was supposed to be a huge oak tree. And in it, it had three harvests a year. One of those harvests well, of acorns, what we expect to get from an oak tree. The other was of nuts. Um, and the other was of apples. So it was a magical tree that had three different harvests of three different uh, types of uh, fruit, food for the people. And, and not surprisingly, Hagrid is actually the, the person who carries a wand made out of oak, or well, it's his umbrella really, but it's an oak umbrella um, in Harry Potter. So associate with oak, we um we have these magical things called galls. So um ball galls or oak apple galls um are the home of uh wasp larvae. And that what happens is the wasps come and they inject enzymes with their offspring into the tree and it changes the nature of the tree and it grows these protective shells to, to mind the, their uh, larvae until they grow up into wasps and burrow their way out and fly off. 
Um, you might see these on trees every now and again, um, and they're very important to Irish history because actually these were collected by our um, monks um, and even before that, um, really back to fourth century and even earlier than that, they were used to make ink. Um, and so the likes of the Book of Kells, actually the ink came from uh, the oak galls, um, which were cr crushed up and added uh, different things. Um, actually, urine, if you want to know, is what one of the things that was added to it to make uh, the black ink that's used in our books. Um, so some really interesting myths and uh, around our native Irish trees and, and some of the things that grow on them. Um, we also mentioned the Oham or Ogham Celtic uh, Irish alphabet. So each tree actually is associated with a letter on Oham stones, um, which were spotted all the way around. And then the ruins as well are also associated with them. And each of these trees then also has a zodiac sign. So if I just move myself down here, you might see it better. Um, so the Celtic tree is zodiac. I'm an elder tree, and according to the elder tree um, history, if you look it up, it, it suggests that I'm a wild child. It's not something I uh, I really think I am, but uh, it also is associated with scholarship, so um, it's possibly something. It's worth having a little investigation in your school and uh, seeing um, seeing what one you are associated with and reading that up. And we can, I'm sure, find a link and send them on to you. Um, so that is kind of coming to the end of our native Irish trees. But of course, I mentioned a few different countries. Um, and I also, I'm, I'm going to say I am not a professional. So some of the best books that I, I I've read on it is Ireland Trees, Myths and Legends and Folklore, and then The Tree Forager, um, and they have very similar stuff there. But there's myths and legends from other countries as well. For example, in Chinese mythology tells us of the Tree of Life, which is associated with the dragon and a phoenix, and the trees uh, produce a peach every 300 years, that, as opposed to when eaten, give... Um, eternal life to whoever eats it. So um, we'll have to keep a lookout for Chinese trees. In Indian and uh, Hindu tradition, we have the Banyan tree, uh, which is sacred, known as the wish tree. And the powers from the wish tree come true. The bark is associated with Vishnu, the god of salvation. The roots are associated with Brahma, the god of creation. and the branches are associated with Shiva, the god of fertility, and there's more associated with it too. So there's history and traditions in every country and why trees have been so important. And even in our Christian, uh, which I didn't really go into, I mean, you could have a whole other webinar on Christian uh, association with trees. We have our Christmas trees, we have our holly, we have our palm trees, um, and we had our traditional Irish alternatives to those ones that grew here as well. So there's associations there. But definitely, I think there's uh, information there about lots of different myths for you to learn about today, but also there's opportunities for you to go on and do a bit more uh, research on your own. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say thank you. I'm going to say if there is any questions that I'll stop sharing and we can um, we can go into the chat and have a look at what any questions that might have come up. So I'll stop sharing now. Um, Potatoes. I don't know what the potatoes are in reference to. <laughs> oh, the, the oak galls, Rob. Oh, yeah. So the <laughs> oak galls is really interesting. And I, I learned something new about it myself. Yesterday, we were out on a walk in Hazelwoods in Sligo and we saw some. And I was telling a colleague and my colleague told me that when the wasps actually come out, that they have this really heightened sense of smell and they're smelling 
um, a particular thing that's given off by an insect that attacks oak. So the wasp actually then goes to the oak tree that's been attacked by this insect and it kills off those insects. And so there's a whole micro system of work going on with the wasps and the insects and the oaks. And if you were to lose the oak, then that whole little micro ecosystem would be gone in totally, it totally gone. So there's some amazing things in nature. And then because these things were noticed that we come up with our myths and our legends around those things. Um, there's a great so, there's a question there, Rob, on um, well, there's two questions from one school that says, how do you remember all the tree leaves and branches? And also how many native trees are there? Two good questions there. Oh, so two great questions. Um, I, I, I'm going to be stand corrected on this, but I think it's 29 to 30 native trees. Am I? Yeah, I, I think it depends yeah. if you include the shrubs and things. Yeah. It, yeah, it depends on what you include and what, and there are some trees that are questionable whether they're native or not. For example, there's a tree that grows up around Sligo in Block Gill called the strawberry tree. That's considered a rare native tree um, and it doesn't traditionally grow in Ireland, it traditionally grows in the Mediterranean um, but there's also mentions of it in some of our uh, mythology so uh, it's mentioned in Dermot and Grania's story um, that there was a gift of these berries from this particular tree so it must have been a native tree but then it's probably not listed on a lot of our list of native trees um, because it shouldn't grow in Ireland. Um, so there, there's there's links in there. I, I kind of went off the point. <laughs> Can you repeat the question there? So um, how many native Irish trees yeah. are there, which you've answered? And then also, how do you remember all the different tree leaves and branches? So, I mean, I've been learning it a long time. Um, uh, so I, I, I suppose it's my job to remember it, um, but there are lots of little helpful things. So Biodiversity um, Ireland have a little swatch that has all of the different tree leaves and the branches, and, and then you can you can bring that with you. And as you learn the trees, then you, you'll you know which trees they are. And, and trees are like people they have preferences. So if I am down by a river, I know that willow likes to grow beside a river. I know that alder likes to grow beside a river. I'm not going to find willow or alder growing on the top of a mountain, or I'm unlikely to find them there because they don't like to grow there. But I might find a Scots pine growing up the top of a mountain because it likes to grow there or a mountain ash. So there's lots of little hints. Looking at the leaf itself is going to tell you um, uh, looking at the bud, looking at the bark, um, and then looking at where 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 the tree is growing. Um, so you have to be like a little detective, um, and and that's that's how you you learn over time. Brilliant. There's a nice one as well from Miss Healy's class, and they'd like to know what is your favorite kind of tree. Uh, it's a hard so, one. <laughs> it's a very <laughs> One that's growing and healthy uh, is is probably my answer. I I'm a bit obsessed with the strawberry tree at the moment. I want to find one and grow one. Um, but I really like our native holly tree and our um and rowan tree. They're very in, um they're beautiful trees. Um, and I, I'd like to have them in my garden. Um, and if I'm on the zodiac, I'm an elder tree. So. Um, I suppose I should pick something like that, but I'd say mountain ash is probably my favourite. If you're looking at non-natives, then probably a monkey, monkey puzzle tree. So if you haven't mm -hmm. seen a monkey puzzle tree, um, you should go and look for one. And the puzzle is uh, the monkeys don't know how to climb it. And speaking of holly, school Colin Kill asks, why is holly associated with Christmas? Uh, so because it's an evergreen tree um, and the wren boys uh, who are associated with Christmas uh, in Ireland, the wren boys used to go in and decorate themselves with holly and hay and, and make masks and they'd go and knock on doors um, on Stephen's Day um, and ask for um, for gifts um, as part of kind of a pagan tradition that kind of stayed 
in some parts of the country uh, is still done. Um, and then in terms of holly is also associated with the crucifixion because it's pointy and thorny um, and hanging holly decorations uh, because they kept green right the way through the winter months. It brought greenery into the house. So it's associated with uh, everlasting winter, uh, um, you know, growth. So you knew as a farmer, if there was no green, then you'd be worried. But if, if something stayed green the whole winter time, then um, then they knew that spring was coming again. So that, that's that's where the association with holly and winter time and, and Christmas uh, comes from. It, it, these traditions that probably started out as pagan, pagan traditions and then um, were adopted uh, and adapted by uh, Christianity. Brilliant. And I know we've come to up to the end of time and yeah. lots of people have been sending nice messages to say thank you and um, maybe we'll just take one more question Rob there's yeah. one there from Clooney National School asking are is anything being created to stop the ash dieback I think you mentioned earlier and uh, so that there's a lot of research going on at the moment about it but I don't think there's anything that can specifically prevent it um so what we're doing uh, in terms of um, Ireland's answer to it is we're collecting the seeds from the healthy trees um, and we're preserving them. And then once the, the disease dies out, and it, it should do, uh, then we'll be able to plant those seeds and, and let uh, ash come back. Um, the current research that I've seen on it, uh, the standalone trees are actually the ones that are doing better. So uh, if you have ash and there's a, a group of them or a family group of trees or a little grove, that they're more likely to, to catch the um catch the disease than than the ones that are standalone trees on their own. Um so it there's there's a lot of research. I don't think there's anything discovered to to prevent or or protect against the disease yet. Um but but there's there's more research going into it every year, so we, we don't know. But uh, the research that's there now is that sixty percent of of the population so, should survive, um, which is uh, is much better than we thought two years ago. Even um, we thought that it might take it out, like um, like what happened to our our elm trees in in Ireland uh, with uh, a disease called Dutch elm disease, uh, which. Elm has become an incredibly rare tree now. So when when you see elm, it's it's um it's become a sacred tree to us now because it's so rare that we we find uh, elm growing in the wild. So I hope that answers questions. I hope you learned something and uh, took a bit of fun out of it. Um, I think these traditions they all start from something uh, very important. So they, th these all all these trees had important functions in in our history and our heritage, um, and then they became the legends sprang out of out of those uh, functions. So um, it's it's good to know they kind of hint at things that we should be looking at as well. Um, so you know some of the barks being heal having healing qualities. Maybe not that they still do have those healing qualities, and maybe they are ingredients in some of the medicine that we use now um so or they could be in the future well that was great thanks a million rob um really interesting and if anybody um wants to share this with other classes in their school the recording will be up on archery week and um, web page by the end of the day and um, so hope everybody's having a great tree week um, and hopefully you get to get outside and see some of these trees again. Maybe think about some of the legends you just learned about next time you see an oak yeah. tree or a hazel. And give them a hug and hashtag exactly. hug a tree, yeah. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, guys. <laughs>